we're doing, first off, let me go to this. Mark did an amazing job on this. He had to have a hand to get it and a hair put together, so I want to help. I want to give everybody a hand that came to help with that as well. we still got work to do. we still got stuff we're going to be doing because we've got a lot that we need to do here. Amen? All right. Now, with that being the case, we are into the 21 Days of Connection, just starting it off, and there's a bunch of churches all across Floyd County that are joining together to get into this 21 Days of Fasting and Prayer. This is a collaborative series that we're doing. We're basically going to be going off the same messages just so that it, it would echo in unity. Um, but you know me and uh, the guys know me. I'm going to barone it up. So with that being the case, I make it to fit us, right? So the 21 days, when you go to this 21 days of connection.com, there's daily devotionals on there for you to be able to download or to be able to look at and to pray through. These were ones, these are, all of this has been custom made. Uh, Mike Ellis actually wrote those so that we can get through and get us all unified in one page. Amen? If you can, try to be there at the well between 12 and 1 every day, Monday through Friday, for the next three weeks, and from 7 to 8 for the next three weeks. That's the time we're going to come together and pray, and we have different pastors that's going to lead that throughout this. So it's not just like, hey, just a couple of church thing. This is a, a countywide, not just city, but this is a countywide thing. And we're expecting to see God pour his glory out upon this county and this city like never before to change the climate. Because I don't know about you, but the climate needs changed. And when I look around, not just on the outside, but I look at in the church, and I think the climate needs changed in the church as well. So I'm going to get into this series, and I'm going to read my best um, to stay here. So, you know, in order for me to do that, i got to stay right here. Otherwise, I'll have some of y'all be going up and smacking some of you upside the head like Ray, who I haven't seen in quite a while, and just others, you know. But anyway, so with that, I want you to turn, if you will, to Acts chapter 4, verse 24 to 31. And we're going to open up with this, and as we go, we'll, we'll see something that just gives you an idea of where we're going to be. In 1969, the Beatles sang, Come Together. In 1975, the Captain Tennille sang, Love will keep us together. Anybody remember that? Even some of the younger people remember that. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, some of you are like, what? Well, let me, let, let me Georgia it for you. Love will keep us together. Ding. Love will keep us together. Ding. I mean, that's sort of, I need to put that country twang in there. Right. Okay, my wife's giving me that look. Let me go back. All right. Then do you remember that Rick Ashley, who I don't remember him at all, but he sang Together Forever in the Middle 80s. Anybody remember that song? How's it, how's it go? How does it go? Well, come on. Since you said it, tell me how it goes. Then what'd you speak up for? What? Well, I would take that. I mean, that's the title of the song, Together Forever, but... Come on, sing it. I see you over there going like this, Jim. <laughs> come on, Jim. Now, now you can dance. Come on. Give me a little bit of this with you. Yeehaw. You know, come on, come on. Redneck it up a little bit. Anyway, we've got that song, which I really didn't remember. That tune sort of maybe gives a little bit of that back. Then Sting sang, We'll Be Together. Then Taylor Swift sang this, which I, I couldn't tell you much about this, that we are never, ever getting back together. Whoa, I'd say that was a bad breakup, wouldn't you? Huh? Yeah, some of you are probably thinking the same thing. I am never, ever coming back to this church. <laughs> Wrong. Anyway, so it's part of this, but there's something inside of each and every one of our hearts that long to be together. We just long to be together with people. And it's like all the solo artists and some of these people that I just mentioned, they all grab musicians and put them together so that they could sing this song or so they could make great songs for us. But what so amazes me is God put his spirit inside of us so that we could be together with him and that we could come together as one. Isn't that awesome? So togetherness is all through this. We were made for community. We were made for togetherness. From the beginning, God declared that it's not good that man should be alone in Genesis 2.18. Then we see the writer of Ecclesiastes actually say in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10, two are better than one because they are good together for their labor. <clears throat> for if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe, oh man, it's going to be bad. Woe to the one who falls when there is none other there to lift them up. 
I like the acronym that, that we've talked about before, team. Together, everyone accomplishes more. The, the famed Pittsburgh Penguins, the Stanley Cup champions, praise the Lord. Hopefully they'll get that this year, too. They have this hanging on the, the wall when you walk into their locker room because they know that it takes work together to get there. And we have to work. We have to. If we don't, if we don't work, especially together, we're not going to make anything. We're just going to be low. We're not going to get to the point where God has us. We'll never make it. We could accomplish so much more together than we can on our own. But let me ask you this. Has this church forgotten this? Has churches in a whole forgotten this part right here? Have we forgotten that we have to work together? Really, really have we? That we're called to be together? Let me ask you a couple questions. Can you name all the people sitting in the row either in front of you three or behind you three? Do you know the family that's sitting all the way across the other room? Do you know the strengths of the person that's sitting in front of you? And maybe the struggles of those that are sitting just a couple behind you. So let me ask you a question. How together are we? So now I'm going to do something that you know is going to barone it up. Can't help it. I want you all to stand to your feet. Miss Cynthia, don't you give me that look. Here's what I want you to do. I want you women, take your purses, grab your purses in hand. Oh, no. <clears throat> First, we're taking our utes, and we're going to bring our utes over here in the congregation. Come on, utes, get on over here, and don't sit with your parents. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, so, so here's what I want you to do. No family. Everybody else, I want you to get with somebody that you don't know. Come on, come on, get out. Get, get with somebody. Somebody you didn't come with, come on, come on, just get with them. Come on, come on. If you don't know somebody, great, get to know them. Come on, break it out. Get there. Dominic. Dominic. Oh, never mind. It's taken. Now I want you to go and have a seat with them. Have a seat right with them somewhere. Come on. Come on, have a seat. Now, wait a minute, how did the youth get back together over there? Hey, Zach, come over here. Come on up here. Come on up, 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 up. No, towards me, towards me, towards me, towards me, towards me, towards me, towards me. One more. No, not, yeah, you, you come over here and sit with Todd. You, all right, you get right in between, that's it. You scoot over that way, come on, and you sit right there. All right? All right, how we doing? What's everybody scared for? All right. I need somebody to sit over here with, with Chad. Chad, come on up here and sit with Randy. Sit in between Randy and Leah. Come on. Randy's been wanting somebody there anyway. Get there. <laughs> Yo, Ethel, I ain't coming back to this church again. Okay, so now, let me ask you, do you know the person sitting beside you now? You don't. You, okay, introduce yourself like right now. Come on. Come on, introduce yourself. That's it, come on. A little bit of talking, come on, a little bit of talking. <clears throat> Open thy mouth. That's it. Come on. Because this is going to be your partner for this series.
You didn't like that one, did you? <clears throat> okay. You do what? Jad squirrel, mm, gone. Okay. Scripture, when we get into Scripture, we find that the church was birthed, and how it was birthed was out of prayer, togetherness. Jesus tells us in his, in, in his passage, actually Matthew 18, uh, verse 20, he says that where two or three are gathered, I'm in the midst. When we grab the understanding of what Jesus is talking about, he's in the midst of right now. Right now coming together. If we would stay in such a fine click that we don't know the other people, how will we grow? Togetherness just doesn't mean that you're standing in one place or you're sitting in one place. Togetherness means that you are going to be molded together. That you spend time with each other. That you war over the hearts together. That you impart into each other. That you release the power and the gifts of the Spirit that God gave you into somebody's life. Because that person you're sitting with, whether they realize it or not, they need you. Oh, here's something too, just for you high and mighties, you high highfalutins. You need them just as bad. If we could come to an understanding that this makes you uncomfortable, but there's great stuff in the midst of it, you're going to see great glory in your life. I truthfully believe that one of the powers that God gives us as, as a body of Christ, as a church, is to be able to come together and share one another's burdens, to lift one another up, to pray for one another and hurt with one another and rejoice with one another. It's in these things that God shows himself faithful. You don't ever see the glory of God without looking through somebody. You just really can't. God created that person, including you, fearlessly and wonderfully. Now, here's where I want you to get this. This fearlessly and wonderfully isn't out of reverence, or should I say not just reverence. Fearlessly and wonderfully means that you are fearlessly made, that every, de every demon in hell and every bit of darkness trembles because God's created you. And why? Because the wonder of all of heaven is in you. If we come to the realization that God has created you to be the representative to represent Christ, to represent the power of the kingdom, then understand this. All homelessness, all sickness, all disease, all bondage stops. But we can't even get out of our own clothes because we're scared. We're uncomfortable. I saw some of your faces. As soon as I told you the women to grab the purses, oh, no. I'm not going to mention your name, Miss Cynthia. But <laughs> I'm just joking. But it, it, it's one of those, honestly, people don't like that. And I could tell you it was probably going through some of the youth's mind. Now, what is this idiot going to do now? Guys, I want you to know the people that are sitting by you. Because you need to lift them up and put them on the altar of heaven. If God, this is what I so love, if God in prayer birthed the church because the Holy Spirit came upon the church, I want to take us now back to back and forth here just a little bit. Can I do that? All right, I'm going to follow. Y'all know I'm going to be speaking a lot of Bible without making you go and taking a reference because some of you are still falling asleep, so I'm trying to wake you up again. When the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, what happened? She conceived inside of her a womb, a, a baby. After this, she gave birth to the plans, the purposes, and the deliverance of all the earth from heaven. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a body, I'm talking about you, and in this we just read, or I just quoted to you, Matthew 18, 20, that Jesus said, where one or two or three are gathered, I am in the mist. So his spirit comes upon you, and this is how we know that we're walking in the fruitfulness of God. Because when his Holy Ghost comes on us, it's going to conceive something in us that's going to birth something that's going to be miraculous. See, some of you are just like, you missed that whole part. Whatever you're in need of, whatever somebody else is in need of, when we come together, good luck trying to stay with me, Stevie. <laughs> 
Whatever you're in need of now becomes a part. It's reality to your life. You can grab it right now, whatever it is. Maybe it's loneliness that you're dealing with. Maybe it's an addiction or a hurt. Maybe it's a sexual confusion. Whatever it is, I'm telling you right now, it is available to you right at this very second. And why? Not because you're something special, but you're made out of something special. You're sitting beside somebody that is the glory of God. That God made all of heaven stand in attention and all hell quake because of his spirit living in that person. And I've got to tell you, today it is only birthed through prayer. It's the only way it happens. That's it. Prayer is so amazing that when we allow it to do its job, it will produce its results. Jesus never promised anything that he will not fulfill. And he says, you ask me in prayer, two or three, touching anything, it shall be done according to my word, according to my will. Matter of fact, he went so far that Paul just had to around and say, say, yes and amen. Right now, what is it that you need? You don't need to go, I'm sick and tired of people trying to go find a prophet, an apostle, a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist. I got news for you. We were only created and put in a position to equip you to go out and do the work that I'm speaking to you now. Do you realize that you have the power to raise the dead? Do you? Do you realize that you have the power to watch demons flee? Do you realize that you have the power to break any depression, any discouragement, any darkness that's over time? Do you realize that you have the power, because it's him who lives in you, to make every lie that was ever spoken against you stop today? Do you realize that? And all we want to do is play church. We go to church on Sunday. They're going to get up there and sing, it's a good thing, hallelujah, it's a good thing. Ah, we're coming together because God loves us and he's given us his spirit that this is the other part of knowing that we're born of God because we love the brethren. We can't wait to come together. We can't wait to lift somebody up. I can't wait to see how somebody's doing. I can't wait to pray, to watch Chip, 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 yeah. I can't. I know his name, trust me. He trips me up more than any chip I can make. I do too. Yeah, ow. It's one of those things where we can't wait to come together. So with this being the case, and see, I told those guys I was going to barone it up, you know. Prayer is powerful. It born the church. This is what it says in Acts chapter 1, verse 14. These all with one mind were continually devoting themselves to prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. It goes on in Acts chapter 2, verse 1. It says, when the the day of Pentecost had come, they were all. Somebody say all. All. Well, I didn't. Somebody sounded like they were yawning. Oh. Somebody say all. all. Yeah, together in one place. We're all together. We're at one place. We're setting our heart towards the Lord. And it's not so that we see this, but, but, but the Lord, would, how many of you want to see the Lord show up? What would it be like, honestly, if he would just reach up here, grab this roof and pull it back, and Jesus come down and go, Whoa. what would it be like? What would we do? Oh, man. I know people would say, I'd run up and give him a hug. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You do that. Right off the bat, I'd be falling to my knees. Oh, I am unworthy. But then immediately, his glorious righteousness would penetrate, and his love would take me over, that I would crawl, and he would be trying to lift me up into his hands. Every wrong would be made right. Every wrong. How many of you got some wrongs in your life? How many of you are ready to see them made right? This is what can happen today. Do you realize you are the body of Christ? The very thing that I'm talking about is the very thing that follows the fruits, follows those who love him, those that seek him in such a way. Scripture speaks of this over and over and over. 
The church was born as the early discipleships gathered to pray, to bring us all together. It's part of that. Just as God scooped down and grabbed the dust and he breathed life into Adam and, and Adam became a living soul. So what happens when people come together, God's spirit breathes life into us and we don't just become a church. We become a body. We become a living organism, a living, powerful, poor, just all oh, awesome example of love. Of love. Isn't that cool? These are the things that God's trying to do. Now, here's what's so awesome. is he, If he could get this through renovation, he will get this through the other churches. And then as we come together, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, you'll see even more. And then at the very end, in January 28th, when we all come together that evening for a big celebration and commissioning service, you will see such a glorious sight that has probably never, well, no, I know, that has never been seen in Rome, Georgia before. And I would venture to say never to be seen in your life because God's ready to break through, to set you through. All comes from him and what he does in us, how he's working through us. Well, let me, let me, let me move on because I want to get at least some of these. I do got to keep some of these points. Here's the next thing. The church was bonded together. Acts chapter 2, 42, 47. Go ahead and go there. Even though I told you to stay at 4, it got you close to it. Matthew, come on up. Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47 is a foundational scripture for renovation. It's foundational and not just in its teaching, but it's foundational in its spirit. I don't want to just see people come. I just don't want to see the place full. I just don't want to see people go out and go, yeah, that was good. I felt really good. And then the moment that you walk out, you lose everything that God's given you. I want to see people completely set free, completely healed. I want to see people empowered. Somebody say empowered. All right, look at me. Don't look at Matthew. Look at me. Look at me. You'll, you'll, you'll notice what he's doing later after he shocks himself. Yeah. So let's go back to this passage. I want you to see this. <clears throat> 42 to 47. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need day by day continually (laughs) with one mind in the temple, breaking bread from house to house and taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those that were being saved. Man. The apostles' teaching, the fellowship, the breaking of bread into prayers served as a bond that the believers would get to come together. These practices of the early church was like a weld. Somebody say welding. What happens is we take two pieces and we put them together. And as we put them together, there's got to be a weld to make them strong. If they're not made strong, it can't go. Here's the part. And as Matthew does this, I'm going to take this really quick. As is, is is, is we go through this, we have a ring. And this ring's going to make something by the end of this series. And I want you to stick around for this series. I really, really do. Because, you know, I'm going to barone this series up. Yeah. As God puts us together, there's only so far that we could reach by ourselves. But welded together, not just linked, but welded together, great things happen. We can now reach further with stronger strength than what we've ever done because once you reach to that limit just 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 trying to reach out to that limit trying to reach out to that limit it's going to stop so far and that's as far as we me and him can go that's it but if we're welded together through prayer it's going to continuously be there and there's nothing that can break it no matter how far i go where i go i could reach more people we can get deeper into somebody's life because we're welded in prayer so, so let me ask you a question as we do this. How many of you, Goodman, how many of you can really say that your prayer life is like a welding machine? Yeah, don't even look at him. Just look at me. Yeah, yeah. He, needed, he wanted to turn around and go, see it, see it, see it. How many of you could tell me that your, your prayer life is like a welder? 
that it's hot and fiery and that whatever it touches, it just bonds together. How many of us can really say that? It has to be a part of that. It does. See, it's a part of where God takes us and he puts us together for these reasons. They continue to stick together. It is Acts chapter 2, two verse 44 says, And all who believed were together. The togetherness must have been noticed by everybody else because we find that the Lord, at the very end here, the Lord added to them day by day. Don't look at that. Come on, look at me. Day by day. Is the Lord adding to you good people in your life day by day? Is he putting people in your life that you've got to reach out to, to minister to, to bring to Jesus day by day? Prayer brings these things about. It starts this to get us. There's a, a, a thing that, a quote that I really liked, and it was by A.T. Pearson. And it says, there has, there has been, there has never been a spiritual awakening in any country or any locality that has not begun in prayer. Prayer has got to be able to be the bedrock to everything that we do. It's what ties us together. It's what brings us there. It, the, the more together that we are, the stronger that we become. We find this with teams, football teams, hockey teams. All, they all practice together. We find with the, the teams that, that play best together, they actually work good together, they'll win together. The praise team, they're better when everybody's up here and they're doing it together. It all works in these areas. Everything has got to be, somebody say it with me, together. Yes. Remember that acronym team. Together everyone accomplishes more. The verses, the, the one another verses all through Scripture remind us of how powerful it's got to be that we're all together. But he tells us in, in James chapter 5, verse 16, that we must pray for one another. So it's not just good enough to be together, but we must pray. Somebody say pray for one another. We are together in the things that we can do for the church and the family. We're all together so that we can see greater things happen in the lives of this community that don't know Jesus. So it's not just for your benefit. If it's only for your benefit, it's not powerful enough. Because, see, Jesus came not just for your benefit, but to benefit all. And that's what he wants to do in us. Benefit all. All of us. So what are some of the things that we could do as a church together to, to build some boldness or to build some strength? Well, one's maybe some home groups. Yeah, I know some of you guys don't like that, but some of you do. Home groups is a necessity. If you will get into a good home group, I'm telling you right now, you'll grow. You'll be able to expand a little bit more. You become tighter with the ones that you're around. You're able to speak things that you can't just come up in the front of the church and say, hey, guess what? I'm struggling with porn. I wouldn't recommend that. But yet in a home group, you could grab somebody that's close to you and you could pray with them and you lift each other up and you could break those things. That's part of this. It's part of where he wants. It also goes where, where we could do things like going out with, with Merlene at Reach and, and doing some ministry there, or Danny at the Bible giveaway, and so many different things that we offer, even coming together in prayer here at the church, which is kind of hard. It really is. So what's some of the things that we could do as a, as a church to reach out in the community? Well, one is to participate in these 21 days of fasting in prayer for our daily gatherings. Maybe try to be calm. And I understand you can't come to all of them, but at least try to come to some because there's something really good in it. And honestly, if you claim to be a Christian, prayer is going to be your main thing. And if you haven't figured that out yet, then I probably need to tell you that's probably why you're tripping up all the time, why you're falling, why you don't have no, no real, why you're reading Scripture, but yet you can't understand it. It's because you're not praying. You're not seeking the author of not just this book, but the author of your life. The one that created you, the inventor of all things. The second thing is to meet with churches in our community to combine worship service from time to time. Let's get together and, and worship with other churches as we do with Master Moses and a few others. We need to do this more often. And then to serve other churches when they do communities. You don't have to be a part of another church to go out when they go out to the community. Cornerstone does this a lot. Their servitude is really good. They hit the, the cities in a good bit, and a lot of other churches do. We could be a part of that to help them, or you individually can. Well, this last one is the church sought for boldness. They sought for it, and they got it. This is what's taken us back to Acts chapter 4, verse 23 to 31. <clears throat> 
When they had been released, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief, the priests, and the elders had said to them. And when they heard this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord. Somebody say that's praying. Yeah, one accord. O Lord, it is you who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples, and the peoples devise futile things? The king of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly in this city there were gathered together against the holy servant Jesus whom you have anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel. Guess what that tells me? Even the enemy knows the power of unity, the power of togetherness. Notice how it just wasn't one or two, but it was a bunch, right? They knew it was going to take it together. They did. To do whatever your hand, your, whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. And now the Lord, take note of their hearts and grant that your bond servants may speak your words with all confidence. Somebody say boldness. That's what he's wanting to do. Now, now watch this. While you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they prayed, the place that they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with. And see, they were praying for boldness, and they got boldness. That's pretty popular, pretty powerful stuff, isn't it? If you ask me, it is. But they were threatened. The devil threatened you, and he's been threatening you, and you listen to it. People might make fun of me, I don't know how to pray. I'm afraid of stepping up. What if God doesn't do this? What if I go up to lay hands on a sick and they don't get healed? Well, that's not up to you. That's up to the maker of heaven and earth. It's totally up to him. It's got to be completely God's sovereignty and his will. But in the midst of this threatening, which we actually find in the 21st verse here, as we go back up, 421, it says, when they had threatened them further, they let them go, finding no basis on which to punish them on the account of the people because they were all glorifying God for what had happened. Whew. And then as we find that they went out and they found somebody, and this is the thing for us. Together, and as I read in Ecclesiastes, it, it, together we could see something happen. When somebody falls, you won't make it, but with somebody with you, you can. You find somebody that will help you through this, and you proclaim this with boldness. No, 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 devil, you're, this ain't going to take flight today. I'm not going to allow this to be in my life or in my family or my friends' lives. In the name of Jesus, you got to go. You can't stay here. And as you start to, to get that boldness risen up, you'll see things start to run away. You'll see greater things happen. Jesus actually said that if we would come to him, he will make all things right. Guys, we have to come to him. We do. They lifted their voices up together to God. Verse 24. They did not start boycotts. They didn't write to their politician or to religious leaders. They didn't sulk and just, oh, poor me, poor me, and everything's up. They didn't give up. But they gathered to pray to the sovereign Lord. They acknowledged through their prayer God's strength, and they acknowledged that this in verse tells us in verse 27, in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus and the political and religious people of that day. They knew it, but they knew, Lord, this is what's going on. I'm telling you, I need you. Don't, don't do this bunch of lying stuff to say, you know what? Mm, it, the doctor just told me that my body's riddled full of cancer. I, I rebuke that. Well, that's fine. You can rebuke it all you want. But you've got to give it to God in ownership. Lord, this is what it's here. Your body heals me. Your power of the cross. Those stripes. And I claim that stripe. See, the moment that you start lying is a moment that God can't step in it. Lord, I'm struggling. I, 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 I just don't know which way to turn. My wife's ready to leave me. My kids hate me. My dog ran away. I lost my job. I'm not going to make it. They're going to shut my, 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 my electric. I don't know what to do. But I'm putting it on you. Now God can work in your situation. Because if you come and say, God, none of this happened. Really? 
Let's go back to this. I just need to go here. If we're watching a football game or, or even a, a basketball game, well, let's, I said this before. Let's just say we're at a football game. We're sitting there at the football game, and, and we're losing 24 to 3. And he, coach calls timeout. We come running up there, and he says, okay, boys, we're losing 24 to 3. And, and let's just say that, that Sister Gwen, she's on the football. She's quarterback. Yeah, her and her new hip. Anyway, so she's sitting there, and she says, guess what? I don't receive that. Does that change the score? It doesn't, does it? It's still what? 24 to 3. But now what she could say is, you know what? It is 24 to 3, but there's something greater inside of us that's going to make us win, so let's get out there and do it. So now Gwen says, I want to pass the ball off. Yeah, because I can't do this. Me and my hip feels pretty good, but I just don't want to get too far. So she passes the ball off. Now somebody else comes in, the quarterback. Guess who that quarterback is? Somebody say Jesus. He come in there and he says, okay, now I'm going to make sure we're going to get this. So he calls a wide receiver that's the best wide receiver ever that could catch anything that anybody ever throws his way. You know who his name is? Somebody say Holy Ghost. Whew, it ain't going to be a person, I can tell you that much. Yeah, I don't care how great any receiver, any person was, you will never make it to the point of being a Holy Ghost. People throw stuff at us all the time. We drop it. But it seems the things that we catch the most are the things the devil throws at us. We do, don't we? Hmm. But in prayer, we could watch God come in and the Holy Ghost rise up and break that, and we will only catch the balls that we're going to score with. And then we could do those, you know how they're doing all that new, that new dancing stuff? We could all do that. We could watch Dale go up there and go, yeah. Draw a great big funny face on him or something. Yeah. We need to do these things together in prayer. We have to. I have a, a question to ask you. In the beginning, let's go back to this. The Lord wants me to go back. Let's go back to Acts chapter 2. Because I want to ask you something. How many of you believe that you're, in a, you're part of the church? Everybody? Let me see your hands. Okay, good deal. Good deal. Here we go. Watch this. Right here at verse 42. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to... This was, the, this was the early church. This is the church. Are you doing that? Would you, could you? I mean, uh, ask yourself a question. If this was the sign of the church where every day you were together, because every day they were together, they were inside the temple, they were going from house to house, breaking bread with sincerity of heart and gladness, and everybody taking their meals. They were teaching, they were listening to the apostles' teaching. They were teaching, they were seeing signs, wonders, and happen. But the thing was, let's go back to this, the teaching of this. And on top of all of that, they were praying every day together. Would you be a part of that church? Because you're not now, are you? Boy, did that just sort of sit in a little bit, didn't it? I could sort of felt it. It was just like I felt people going, huh. this is the call. Can I, can I ask you something? I'm not one of these guys that believe that, that God's only doing the signs, wonders, and miracles in other nations. He's doing it here. But can I tell you what I believe that he does? I don't believe that it has nothing to do with faith. Because when I'm faithless, he remains faithful. If it was my faith, it would be me doing it, not him doing it. I'm going to tell you what I think it is. I think it's my lack of obedience. I think it's my lack of devotion to one another. I think it's my lack of wanting to come together every day and praying every day, being taught the word of God together every day, eating every day. That's what I think. Now, you might think I'm nuts, and I'm sure you probably do, but this is a question. If we saw signs and wonders happen there, could this be the missing ingredient for our signs and wonders today? I'm just asking you. Everybody loves those services like we had last week. Ooh, yeah, breathe in the river. But when it comes time to start to smack you a little bit, it comes time where, where God the shepherd wants to come in and straighten us up a little bit. We don't like it too much, do we? I want to speak something to your heart today. It's not a matter of what you're going through. It's who you're going through with it. It's not a matter of how you're getting through it, but who you're getting through with it. 
You could pray in tongues all you want to very, very constantly. I do all the time, but the devil still comes upon me, and I'm going to tell you when he gets me, when I'm sitting by myself and I start to separate myself from the church. I start to do what I want to do, what's right in my own mind and not what's right into God. Because what? I am happy with my own self. I judge myself according to myself. I come out rosy. Oh, dabbing, dabbing me. Oh, my wife gave me that look. So let me ask you, this fast that we're entering in, which is a great fast, a great thing. If you're not praying, it's worth nothing. They go hand in hand. Just as Matthew came up here and he welded these pieces together, these things go hand in hand. I'm half afraid to, to drop it at Michael Bain. No, I'm joking. These things will be made one, a solid unit. Can't be broken now. These two metal pieces here were just as strong as if they were solid all the way around. But they were never broken. Do you get that? And what did that? Something hot. Something had to get in there with the two ingredients, right? A metal and something hot, which is going to be the electric, right? It does something inside that it melts you. And this is what happens to us. In order for us to be the church, in order for us to see great things happen, we have to melt for each other we got to be hot for each other. we got to be so ready to pray and never stop it at all, man. Believe in greater things and knowing that when junk does happen, we could cover it underneath the blood of Jesus, cover it underneath of mercy and not judgment, cover it underneath the prayer. And if it's covered underneath the prayer, the demons can't get there. No death can get there. No sickness and disease can get there because it's under the canopy of prayer. It's under the tent of prayer. And this is one of the reasons, honestly, where we would get to the prayer shawls, which I'm not going to teach into. But that's part of it. You get up underneath of your tent, and as you were underneath your tent, it was just you and God. Just you and God. Nobody could get underneath there. And that's the same thing when you get up underneath that tent, that canopy of prayer with somebody else. Nothing can get in there. If you got rats in your life, get the garbage out and the rats won't be there. But you need somebody to help you catch them rats. I call it rat killing. Yeah. So I set you there with somebody before I end this service. I set you there with different people. Now what I'm going to have you do is turn to them. I want you to ask them, what can I pray for you for? And if the person is too scared or doesn't want to say or whatever, then you know what? Just pray something else. Just say, Lord, touch this hoodlum. Come upon. <laughs> Notice when I said that I was sort of looking over here. Yeah, it's okay, guys. But just ask the Lord to touch them, to fill them up, to give them what they need. You, listen to me, look at me. Honestly, really, really look at me. You are the answer to that person beside you. And that person beside you, is the answer to what you're looking for. And you've got to renew it. You've got to get it powerful in prayer. Are you ready? Honestly, are you ready? Do you want to see something great happen? Yeah, Pastor, I do. <laughs> I really do. I'm jumping on the inside. <laughs> I'm a screaming hallelujah and running around. I'm praying in tongues on the inside. Well, man, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask for your holy Talita over this congregation this morning. Lord, I ask that every word that is lifted up in prayer be completely of you. And God, as it is, I ask that you break every stronghold in this person's life. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, start to speak to their hearts now. Now, come on, start praying. And they, don't, don't, don't. I'm gonna, I need to say this first. I ain't got nothing against denominations, so I'm not picking on any of them. But I want to tell you right now, you can't show me in Scripture where they confess something out and they did it by. How are you going to say yes and amen to that? Quickly.
Sí. Is there anybody in here by themselves? Because I don't want you by yourself. Kendra's by herself. Who is? Who else is? Mr. Lester, there you go. Anybody else? Come on, I don't want you by yourself. Who's with Miss Judy? Go ahead, get with her. Anybody else? Two of them. I want two together. Tabby, who are you with? Tabby's with needing somebody. You ain't supposed to be with your woman. <laughs> oh. Well, let me switch you up with Jamie. How's that? You go back there with Heather and Jamie, you come up here with, with where Randy is. You got to watch Heather, though, Randy. Heather will bite you. Or whoever, either Randy or Leah, whichever one, don't matter. We're all family. Church. Jesus walked inside, and I want to take us to this level first. Jesus walked inside the temple, and we find him cleansing the temple twice. And every time he did, it's because they were selling things. Can I ask you something? Are you selling your soul, all that stuff, to things that you think that are God that are not? Because Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer. That's what the Father said. So in other words, you don't sell anything and you don't buy of anything but of God. So quit trying to sell all of those problems, all of your cures to something else that's not going to get you there. And now, buy to the Lord. So I want to hear prayers lifted up today. And I mean, I don't want to hear just... The other person beside you needs to hear your words. They need to say yes and the amen to it. Come on, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Pray. Be bold. Believe big. Pray for amazing things. Come on, pray it out loud. Come on. Be uncomfortable. I believe somebody's praying for a mountain to be removed. something in this place today and every man and woman and child of God you birth the glory of the kingdom of God mm, yeah come on hear the voice of love that's calling there's a chair that waits for you and a friend who Understands everything you're going through. But you keep standing at a distance. 
in the shadow of your shame but there's a lot of hope that's shining won't you come and take your place and bring it all to the table it's nothing here Sadness, there's a savior and he calls. Bring it all to the table. He could see the weight you carry. The fears that haunt your heart. And through the cross you've been forgiven. You're accepted as you are. And bring it all to the table. It's nothing he ain't seen before. For all your trials, all your worries, and your burdens, there's a Savior and He calls. Bring it all. There's a Savior and He calls, bring it all to the table. All right, I want you to stand right where you're at. Come on. Stand and we're, gonna, we're just going to keep this song for just finishing this song up. But in the midst of it, what I want us to do is I want us to lift up something. Now, you've prayed for the person beside you. The person prayed for you. And if you didn't, I'm really sorry because you've just missed one of the greatest opportunities of your life. To see an answer to prayer in somebody's life is amazing. But what I'm going to ask you to do in the midst of, of them singing this song, bringing it all into the table, we're bringing all those concerns that we have to the table of the Lord. And unto the table the Lord is feasting at a banquet. It's not a, a place that's bare. It's a place that's overwhelmed with everything that we need. So today, as we sing this, I want you to just release unto the Lord all of those concerns, all those things that you need Him to take away, and believe that it's done. I'm going to say this. Believe that it's done. I'm going to say it again. Believe that it's done. When we make the confession of our mouth line up with the words that God has written about us that has been bought by the blood of Jesus, we have what we say because therefore we have a high priest and his name being Jesus. It is ours. Amen? So as we sing, I want you to do this again. Just lift it up to him. Just lift up those concerns. He can see the weight you carry The fears that haunt your heart and Through the cross you've been forgiven You're accepted as you are And bring it all to the table it's 
nothing he ain't seen before. For all your trials, all your worries, and your burdens, there's a Savior and he calls. Bring it all to the table. Bring it all to the table. There's a Savior and He calls, bring it all to the table. Yeah, yeah. To the table. Bring it all to the table. Bring it all to the table. Yeah, yeah. Come on in, take your place. There's no one who's turned away. All you sinners, all you saints, come right in and find your grace. And bring it all to the table. It's nothing he ain't seen before. For all your trials, all your worries, and your burdens there's a savior and he calls bring it all to the table to the table bring it all to the table Verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place that they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. I pray that your heart just shook today. I hope and I pray that it continues on to shake throughout this, this fast to break everything that's in your way. I see that other people are bringing stuff up to be broken today. It's not the day to hold that stuff up. Today, let him shake those shackles from you. Today, let him set you free. Because you are free indeed. Free. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare over top of this congregation and this people that they be a praying people. That, God, as we come together again, we're going to hear of great things that you've done. We are going to hear just exactly what the Word of God says. That we will hear people speaking of the great things, the powerful things, the deliverance, the healing, the salvation that has come about to our household, to everywhere we live, work, and play because of who you are. And, Lord, I thank you that as we're united together, that, Lord, did you give us excitement to see what you're going to birth during these next 21 days. And, Lord, I thank you that as we do this, we know that you have got it. You have got it all. So unite us, Lord. Sit you on every part of our, our, our schedule for this month, Lord. Switch it around so that we could be together at these meetings. Lord, I ask that as, as we do come together, you show up before we get there. You put it on our hearts, Lord, that we don't go in there just to pray. We go in there a-praying that we've already been praying and we will not stop. Let our amens be very few, holy Lord. And Lord, let them shake everything around. I thank you for this, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Now, I just want to just take you to one thing really quick as I'm, I'm going to let you go with this. Monday, I just need to remind you, Monday to Friday, from 12 to 1 at the well, and then from 7 to 8 again at the well, there'll be different pastors praying. You're only going to be an hour. That's going to be about it. We're not going to, I'm not going to have you get together. They're not going to have you get together and do what I just did. You know, I hope they do. Gosh, would I love that. Some of you are like, well, I ain't going. I ain't going. I just don't do that. You'd be surprised at the boldness that would come across your heart when you would open up your mouth to pray for somebody. You would start to pray and something would come out and you'd say, did I do that? How, where'd that come from? And some of you that were, were speaking English that really couldn't speak English except for Matthew kind of English, then you'd start to really speak English. Man, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. And then just somebody, God would give you a prayer language. He would give you tongues that you've never seen. And a power deep within. Oh, church. If I could just emphasize what that is. Keep this thought in mind, too. If the early church met daily to pray, shouldn't we? I have a hard enough time getting people here once a week on Tuesdays. What would it be like if we did it? What would it really be like if we did?